Hello everyone to this tutorial of Herbert Lütti Mountain and Ski Guide in Zermatt. This tutorial doesn't claim to be complete, but it should show you problems and solutions. The rod line is not a climbing rope, it's a hypostatic cord. This can be seen that the strength is specified with kilonewtons. With the climbing ropes, the strength is specified with standardized falls. Try and practice with the rod line at home. Either from a height you could jump down or be late with an additional rope. In this way you know the rod line and its characteristics when you are on the mountain. Enjoy it! Here, how to tie a cloth hitch. We hold the rod line with crossed arms, then we bring the arms parallel. The received loops are getting across together. To hold the cloth hitch, a carabiner must be clicked in. For a cloth hitch on an object, the rod line has to be threaded through twice. Now the cord has to be laid over the other cord. Now the end has to be threaded through between the loops. The end of the cord has to be attached with a double fisherman's knot in order that it can't be pulled through the cloth hitch. Here how to tie a bowling knot. The rope gets pulled through the roping up part of the harness. The rope has to be twisted 180 degrees to create a loop. Through the loop, the rope gets pulled double through to create a new loop. Through the new loop, the rope gets pulled through and the knot gets laid back to get the bowling knot. Afterwards, the cord has to be attached with a double fisherman's knot in order to back up the bowling knot. Here, how to tie a double bowling knot. We tie a normal bowling knot with the difference that the end of the rope is a bit longer and without a backup knot. A backup knot is not necessary with a double bowling knot. After the bowling knot has been tied, we follow the rope which goes out below the bowling knot, like on the figure of 8, until the end of the rope looks away of you. That is it and we have the double bowling knot. Here how to tie a butterfly knot. The rope gets laid over the hand. Wrap the rope twice around the hand. Now we pull the middle rope below the first rope towards to the fingers. Pass the loop up to the wrist and underneath the two other ropes. Here how to tie a cow hitch. The rope gets laid over the wrist. Then we wrap both ropes with one hand. Afterward the rope gets laid down and the hand moves up in order to be able to click in the carabiner. Repelling with the rod line. When we just repel with the rod line we have the problem that the devices may not break enough. When we take the figure of 8, probably doesn't break enough, therefore we have to make the breaking stronger. The easiest way is to use the small eye. In this way we improve the breaking a lot. When we use a reversal or tuber, probably doesn't break enough. To increase the braking, we click in several carabiners until we get enough braking. It can be three or four carabiners, just as many as we need to get enough braking. Mm -hmm. 
to rappel with the guard line combined with the normal rope, it is more complicated. When we rappel with the guard line and with the normal rope, we have a problem. The guard line breaks less and therefore it gets pulled through faster. The end of the guard line gets higher and maybe we are not able to reach the next anchor or when we don't have a knot on the ends of the ropes, we rappel over the ends. To avoid that the rod line gets pulled faster through the anchor, we use a technique from cannoning. It's called knot against chain link. To do this, we are pulling the rope through the anchor ring and then we tie the normal rope and rod line together with the figure of eight knot. Then we pull the knot to the anchor ring and rappel on the single rope. Then we are down, we use the rod line to pull the rope down. If you don't trust this method or with very big anchor rings, you can use a different technique. It is called carabiner against chain link. Either we tie an overhand knot or figure of eight into the climbing rope. Then we click a locking carabine into the loop and we do the same with the rod line. We click the locking carabine on the rope. The knot gets blocked and again by the chain link and the knot can never get pulled through because of the carabine. Afterwards we can repel on the single rope and the guard line is getting used again to pull down the rope. Most devices are constructed for ropes from about 8 to 10 mm. According to the manufacturer of the T-block and micro traction that they can use with the rod line and they work properly. Because of this it can be assumed that other devices also work. Try the devices at home and make sure they really work properly. Many chiming knots don't work anymore properly with the rod line. The rod line is 6 mm. The cord should be thinner. For me only 5 mm is left. Because I believe 3 or 4 mm are too thin. The Prohaska or Climheis knot work very well. Probably also the Prusik knot. But maybe it has to be wrapped three times. I hope you liked it. When you liked it, please click on the symbol with the thumb up. Thank you very much and goodbye.